Welcome to our channel, where we bring you the latest updates on the most thrilling cars in the market. BMW and Mercedes-Benz are taking two wildly different approaches to the early stages of electrification. Mercedes chose to develop a parallel line of distinct EV models, resulting in the carton of battery electric eggs known as EQ. BMW is taking the opposite tack, slotting its EVs into the same bodies as its bread and butter gas offerings. Munich rocked our world with the i4, the electric version of the 4 Series. The company then scaled it up to the also impressive barge-bodied i7. Now it has taken everything it learned from that Luxo hammer and scaled it down for middle management. The result, the 2024 i5 electric sit-in, is just as captivating. If you thought the i7's split headlight front end and call an orthodontist underbite rear were perhaps a bit too weird, you'll likely find comfort in the i5's vastly more traditional three-box shape. Single-piece headlights flank right-sized kidney grills. A couple of distinct character lines draw your eyes rearward and terminate at a bumper that doesn't look like a pint of cold stone left in the sun. In person, the EV actually looks a bit tighter than the outgoing 5 Series generation, despite being 3.8 inches longer, 1.3 inches wider, and 1.4 inches taller. The cabin is much closer to a carbon copy of the i7s, which is good, because BMW nailed it with that model. A 12.3-inch digital gauge cluster pairs with a 14.9-inch infotainment touchscreen behind a single pane of glass spanning half the dashboard. Physical switch here is limited to the stuff ahead of the center armrest. That sweet strip of ambient lighting is still here, bringing the front half of the cab in high-end crystalline glory. The plastics that make up the door panels and window switches may not be as premium as the 7's high-gloss stuff, but it all still feels very nice. The current Mercedes interiors, meanwhile, can feel constricting with their large center console. The Bimbers innards are about as claustrophobic as an empty warehouse. Clearly, there's a missive somewhere within BMW that demands a car must have one aspect so convoluted. It sounds like it's spoken in tongues. In the i5, it's the output. Don't have an engineering degree? Don't worry, some of our staffers do, and we're still waving smelling salts under their noses. The rear-wheel drive i5 8-drive 40 single motor puts out 308 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque, unless it's in sport mode, where horsepower rises to 335. You can also boost torque, but only by pulling the boost paddle or engaging launch control, at which point it rises to 317 pound-feet. We reckon the i5 could drive 40 will reach 60 miles per hour in a comfortable 5.0 seconds. The all-wheel drive M60 repeats this nonsense but with higher numbers. Normal output is 510 horses and 586 pound-feet and sport mode bumps power to 593, while the boost or launch control shuffle increases twist to 605 pound-feet. Our 60 miles per hour estimate drops to 3.3 seconds on this model. If someone asks you how much power your i5 makes, just give them the highest numbers. Confusing a stranger to death may incur civil liability. We started our drive on the tight and fracturous roads leading into the mountains from Lisbon, Portugal. Even on pavement, whose quality is best described as American, the single motor i5 it drive 40 proved serene. It's clear that comfort is this model's primary goal, mission accomplished. Air springs are standard in the back with good old coil springs up front. Our sample car was equipped with optional electronically controlled dampers. No matter the mode we chose, the ride quality hued toward pillowy, but not so much that it felt loose or uncontrolled. It's exactly the kind of ride you want from a luxury set-in for serious business folk. Switching over to the i5 and 60 was like going from decaf to straight espresso. While the iDrive 40's acceleration was merely adequate, the M60's was closer to unnecessary, befitting the M badges plastered all over the body. This model's suspension includes M-specific tuning, so it rides just a bit more stiffly than the InDrive 40, but it still remains compliant enough for daily driving. If you like a little, or in sport mode, more than a little sportiness, this is the model to get. Provided you can stomach the upcharge, that is, the i5 iDrive 40 starts at $67,795, but the M60 jacks that up to $85,095. We also had a chance to take a crack at the latest iteration of BMW's Highway Assistant. Think of it as Teutonic Super Cruised. It permits hands-off driving with monitoring via an eye tracking camera in the gauge cluster. Its latest parlor trick is that the driver can confirm system suggested lane changes with a mere glance to the corresponding side view mirror, a feature that works with impressive competence. The idea of changing lanes without first activating the turn signal should come naturally for many BMW owners. Both i5 variants rely on the same battery. Under the body is a lithium ion unit with 81.2 kilowatt hour of usable capacity. 
plug it into the mains via a 240 volt level 2 setup, and it will pull up to 11.0 kilowatt through its onboard AC charger. On the DC side, the i5 charges with more gusto than its bigger brother, peaking at 205 kilowatt versus the i7's max of 195 kilowatt. At full clip, that'll send the battery's state of charge from 10 to 80% in a half hour. EPA range estimates for the i5 and Drive 40 are from 270 to 295 miles per charge, with the Zipier and 60 lowering that to 240 to 256 miles depending on tire choice. As with the i7 M70, the i5 has a new option that can help get you to the next plug if your mental math didn't quite add up. Max range mode scales back motor output, reduces the top speed to 56 miles per hour, and disables the climate control. BMW claims as retooled its charging software to allow the battery to accept the highest rate of charging it can as quickly as possible and add states of charge higher than damn near empty. BMW claims to have benchmarked the i5's 400 volt electrical architecture and its 800 volt competitors and believes it's close to reaching charge parity with those better endowed rivals. We look forward to testing that for ourselves. These max charging rates are under ideal conditions, of course, considering that the current US charging infrastructure is a patchwork of elder horrors. Expect your results to vary. Thank you so much for joining us today. Until next time, keep chasing your dreams and embracing the thrill of the road and drive safe.